<sighs> ban list pog champ, ban list pog champ. I'm sorry, <laughs> MBT, you can keep that. How's it going, guys? This is RevYGO. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video. We finally got the ban list, and honestly, um, <laughs> there, there's a lot to discuss here. This, this list, I am indifferent about. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's great either. I was happy to at least know that three of my four predictions for the Forbidden, like the band cards, was spot on. Appaloosa, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity, and Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal, gone. Get them out of here. Beatrice, long overdue, sweetie. Goodbye. <laughs> bye bye Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity with Centurion and Horus Centurion. Even Whitewoods can make this stuff. Get it out of here. It's not fun. It's never fun. Like... I, I don't know. It's It's been a long time coming. A lot of my friends didn't think Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess, was going to get hit. Are you kidding me? If we have anything to base the patterns off of, Rarity Collection 1. What were in there? Baron de Fleur, Borload Savage Dragon. Look what happened to those two. Generic Omni Negates that most decks can easily make, like Manadium, Snake Eyes, they could make Borload and Baron de Fleur, like, quite easily. Get them out of here. The only one that I'm indifferent about is Fiendsmith's Lacrima. Lacrima is way too new. Dropped in Infinite Forbidden, but I do see it because Lacrima can reborn Engraver. Then you have your two level sixes to go into your Beatrice, your Wave Hiking Caesar, your any other rank six shenanigans that you want to do before you even dare commit to your Snake Eyes line. I get it. And also the unnecessary burn 1200 for game. Why is that burn effect there? I, I I don't get it. I don't get it, but I'm not upset at these four bands. What I am upset at, I would I would have loved to see Flamberge banned on here. My wish list was Flamberge ban, Snake Eyes Ash to one, maybe the Wanted Engine, but it doesn't make any sense considering the tins and the Q QCR Bonanza products that Konami is going to be pushing out later this year. Those are getting reprints, like Bonfire is getting the tin treatment. Wanted, Diabell Star, they're all going to be reprinted soon, so it makes no sense for Konami to hit these as they still want to sell their product to, you know, make money. Because it's a capitalistic society. They are a company after all, and Co Money love that money. But let's talk about what this does with Fiendsmith Snake Eyes, or even Fiendsmith Ubel. Mainly Fiendsmith Snake Eyes, because we would run Lacrima into the revive of Engraver. We can still make rank sixes. It took like maybe not even 30 minutes, and we have the Discord that I'm a part of. Uh, gonna shout out to my friend Delany in this video. Her server actually has people cooking. We're literally cooking in there. And I asked them, well, what's the rank six line now? We can run Sanct, which is the, I believe the quick play spell, Fiendsmith Sanct, where we can summon a special summon a Fiendsmith token, which is a light fiend. We can use that for Requiem. And basically the line is getting into Necro Quip Princess. And then we just shuffle back Requiem to get Fiendsmith. So now we have Necro Quip. So now we don't even need Lacrima. We have Necro Quip Princess and Engraver. Bam, there's your Wave High King Caesar. And you can still do that line before committing to your normal summon of your Ash or your special summon of your Diabell Star to go into your Snake Eyes combo line. It's legitimately free. And the end board looks about the same minus the Appaloosa, if I'm being honest. So you still have, like, you could go Disarray with Wave High King Caesar, with IP in the Spell and Trap Zone, with the Field Spell, and Flamberge. It's, it's still just too good honestly it's the highest tier one it's still the best deck it's still going to be the best deck especially when we get the new support in rota we have mulchami fuoros coming out that's gonna be crazy it's the best mulchami so far so i don't know about lacrima i really don't know again it really slows down the deck not by much but it does make it a little more resource heavy if we want to commit to a rank six exceeds with the wave high king caesar if we're fearing nib or that's the play that we want to go into Let's go more in depth on Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess. Generic, generic, generic boss monsters. I don't want generic extra deck monsters quite easily made, especially with the top tier metas in this current format. It's too much. And of course, with Rarity Collection 2 printing it out, it was either, it was either going to be Appaloosa or IP Mascarena. And I was leaning more towards Appa when other people were going to IP. I think IP Mascarena into SP Little Knight is still fine. That's not that bad. Comparatively to a potential 3-4 to four material Appaloosa that you have to power through, if you have nothing but monsters in your hand, good luck. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity. My god, I wanted this card gone. It's not fun. Genuinely not fun. 
If you see Crimson Dragon, run for your life. Now, of course, you can still do the Cosmic Blazar Dragon, and people are going to be looking into potentially doing the Quasar into Blazar play, which is fine. We can still main deck Droplet. We can still do all that. Totally fine. But the main problem was the Calamity Lock. The Calamity Lock, they pass turn back to you. You OTK them with sudden ease. And it seems like Centurion and Whitewoods just managed to do this for free, if I'm being completely honest. But we'll see what people are cooking on, because, by the way, this list goes live September 2nd. Which, probably if I'm able to rush this video out as quickly as I can, that will be today. Not the date of recording, the day this video goes live, September 2nd, <laughs> this list is going to go live. I was really hoping Worlds would at least have a last hurrah for the ban list. They are really putting pressure on people to just pivot immediately. We haven't even touched on the rest of it. You guys know what the ban list is. And I think we can both say this because I know what the ban list is. I've looked it up, obviously. This is just a recap and a discussion video primarily. You and I both know that Snake Eyes Fiend Smith is still going to be the best deck. Tenpai Dragon, it should still be fine. I revamped my deck. Yes, I play Tenpai. And I even have the Snake Eye Fiend Smith one. But I don't like Snake Eye Fiend Smith. I think it's too boring of a deck to play. I love Tenpai. Just because, you know, battle phase shenanigans. That's me. But also you, Belfine Smith, is going to be a, a parent. Let's take a look at the limits for those of you that don't know. Eva is going back to one. Drytron players are very happy. I can only assume. So I can't wait to see what you guys cook with one if with one Eva. Who knows what you'll be able to do? I don't know if you'll be able to do much with Beatrice gone. Hey, at least you won't have to deal about Beatrice sending Angel of Blue Tears and then Blue Tears effect you can get any <laughs> set the draft. God, I hate that. I genuinely hate that. Let's go to the more important ones. One Snake Eye Ash, one Snake Eye's Poplar. I didn't anticipate Poplar being hit because we run it at two. But I mean, one is still fine. Snake Eye Ash at one, still fine. And you, you know why I'm going to say it. You know what I'm going to say. Even watching most of the Yugi tubers talk about the ban list, it's the same thing, and we're always going to say it. You basically have four Ash and four Poplar in the deck due to three Bonfire. Why didn't they hit Bonfire? Because it's getting reprinted in the tins. They need to sell their product. So this format's still going to be Snake Eye Control until we see what Rhoda has, and Rhoda's got the Water Sharks, so that's going to be fun. Moving on to the Xyz, number 40 <laughs> gimmick puppet of strings and the cake, which is C40 gimmick puppet of dark strings. Dear God, the FTK, di they didn't want the FTK to happen no matter what, so they just, it was safe enough to just hit both of them. Hit the strings and dark strings, buddy. I feel so bad for my friend because he, he was starting to buy the gimmick puppet cards. And I told him, I'm like, look, I don't think an FTK for gimmick puppets is going to last much in this format. You do you, buddy, and unfortunately, I think that is a reality. Gimmick Puppet FTK is gone. Unless y'all want to cook up something crazier, I'm all for it. I'm all for breaking decks to their absolute point of no return. Speaking of breaking decks, we have Branded Fusion. I'm gonna say it. Why didn't you ban Nightmare? Why didn't you ban Sanctifier? Oh, right, because you banned Expulsion just for a set later in Cyberstorm Access. That lovely, lovely set. Cyberstorm Access to where we had, I think it was Bestial Dispatter. And we had quite a few others. And, well, Albion the Sanctifier Dragon just so happened to be in that set. Conveniently, after Expulsion was banned, we now have Sanctifier, which does the same thing. Except only, it's only in Graveyard, so you could DD Crow, call by the gimmick puppet. You could do whatever you want with that. The problem is, I would have been personally fine with Branded Fusion still at 3 if you hit Gimmick Puppet and Nightmare. Please, just get rid of the puppet lock. Like, yeah, we have Ra's Disciple and the Edo lock to deal with, so it's not like they, they don't have other targets. But at the same time, you're just okay with this. Branded Fusion at 1, it's fine. Master Duel had it at 1, and it runs all the same. You have Fusion to... You have Fusion Duplication in case it gets ashed on one turn. If you have Fusion Duplication, set it on on my on the opponent's turn, flip it, target Branded Fusion, and you can just pop off continuously with that. So, Branded Fusion to one is not really that bad because you have Fusion Deployment, you have Cartesia, you have Quem, you have a lot of follow-up and a lot, actually a lot of things to do before you even get to Branded Fusion. 
You literally can set up Grand Guignol with anything else and then Branded Fusion on top of that. That's insane. So this deck is fine. Branded is fine with this going to one. Opening of the Spirit Gates to one. I was really hoping for a Nightmare Throne hit, if I'm being honest. Because with Terraforming still legal in the TCG and you have Nightmare Throne at three, you pretty much have Nightmare Throne at four at this point. And opening of the Spirit Gates, yes, it does choke have a choke point with you bell because dark beckoning beast to try and search the spirit gates or even having the spirit gate team stop it like or even cosmic cyclone get rid of it that's still going to be strong enough to where it can stop certain plays although i do believe with fiend smiths being active i don't think that really matters all that much because fiend smiths can still probably set up to the yama play get sharvara and then just go straight into escape with rage you get what i'm saying spirit gates only does so much Oh, and now we gotta discuss my deck. Ten Pie Dragon, Pot of Prosperity, and Sangen Summoning both to one. I was totally fine with Sangen Summoning going to one. I do think the field spell is kind of cracked, not gonna lie. It basically makes my monsters unaffected for main phase one. That is crazy. But once again, we still run terraforming so we can grab it. We have Pydra, so if you don't have anything, and I have Kaiman in hand, I'm going to grab the summoning, so you better stop my Pydra. But if I have Kaiman in hand, you, you better have an Ash Blossom for it. Pot of Prosperity to 1 actually does shut down a bunch of other decks as well, so it's not really going to be a... It's not going to be as powerful as it was at 3. Because any deck that just needed it and they don't draw, but they search, could just abuse Pot of Prosperity at 3, no matter what. Tenpai was the same way, and that's mainly the deck that does use it is quite a bit is, ten, is Tenpai Dragon. That goes without saying. So, Pot of Prosperity 1, fine with that. Sangin Summoning, I agree. Should be at 1. Grass looks, that grass looks greener is, oh my god, it's fine at 1, I think. I'm just, I just can't wait to see these 60 deck piles just have it in their hand. Out of their 5 initial draw cards, they draw, they, they just happen to open grass. That'll be insane. And a lot of players are saying that maybe this could have the branded players pivot to more of a branded tier Shadal or like any sort of mill deck with the branded cards in there. That would be a different variant of the deck. Maybe might be a bit better. Who knows? We'll see what they're cooking up. Skill drain to one. Ah, skill drain should have been banned if you ask me. They should have done the same treatment like they did with summon limit. Now it just feels sacky if they open the one of and they stop you from playing, and then they have Diabell Star in their hand, or they have wanted, to just get rid of it, and then just kill you the next turn. That, that I disagree, that should be at zero. Either have it at three, have a crap format, or make it zero, and actually make the format a bit more tolerable. I don't like Floodgates, I don't think we should have Floodgates. That's just my opinion. Everyone's opinion differs. Let's go into the semi-limits. Rulers. Bring them back to three. They're not doing anything. They're genuinely not doing anything. So you the, you can bring the rulers back. It's totally fine. Lunalite Tiger is an interesting one. So that'll be fun. Uh, Thunder Dragon Colossus. Mm, Ritual Beast uses this, don't they? And a lot of decks that can make, you know, Infernal Flame Banshee. Banshee searches Nemesis Flag. Flag searches Corridor. Or, you know, a Thunder Monster activates its effect. Bam. Thunder Dragon Colossus for free. So, it going to two. I think Ritual Beast will probably maximize on it. I think other decks will probably just run it at one. I'm not sure if extra deck space is tight for other decks. And if the World Chalice Justiciar didn't do anything when she came to one. So, two is totally fine. I'm pretty sure she was at one, right? If not, you guys will definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, I don't remember every card in every ban list. But if the World Chalice Justiciar is fine at two... We'll see what she can do. Unlimited Armageddon Knight, fine. Red Road Dragon, fine. Magic Specters, I'm gonna see some good stuff with this. Kieran, we have the perform the perform aids plush fire, the eroded version, Ancient Fairy Dragon at three, eroded version, Den Long, my boy, back at three, and Time Seal. Skip the draw phase of your opponent's next turn. Time Seal to three. Hmm. Ah. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> All in all, this list could have been a lot better. It's not complete. It's not complete garbage like people are saying. And I'm and I'm not saying a majority are saying this. I'm just saying like I I feel like it's a missed opportunity. I feel like 
there could have been a couple more bands to actually bring the impact that Snake Eyes has in the format down a bit more. Because honestly, I'm going to show you a clip right here. This is from El Exordio de Dulista. I love their channel. Please subscribe to them. Go watch their content. Like moments after the ban list, they drop this banger of a video. Look at this combo right now. Look at this end board. This is this is possible with Snake Eyes, Ash, and Poplar both to one. If you ban Flambers, the deck doesn't become unplayable. The deck just becomes more so an engine piece to where you have the Azamina cards coming out, which when, which can coincide with the Sinful Spoil stuff. You have other options to go into. Flambers is just a guy that reborns the two and can also push something in the tobacco. He's kind of powerful. The deck only with Fiend, with Fiendsmiths. With the Fiendsmith package, you pretty much only run the one Flambers. Maybe we put it back to two in this deck, but I've seen some people are running Birch over anything else now. We're still running the Snake Eyes Diabell Star one. So, like, we still have a big body on board. But I think just the Reborn 2 and also the something that could push into the back row, it's... And then summon said back row monster onto the field, on your side of the field, it's just... It's just too good. The setup for IP is incredible. And I promise you, even with Flambers gone, you could still set up some decent boards with Snake Eyes. So I just really wish Flambers would have gotten hit. I don't think it would have been like incredibly detrimental if Snake Eyes Flambers got hit. But it would have brought the deck's power down quite a bit. Another card I would put on the Forbidden and Limited list would be Dimension Shifter. We're going to go into a shifter format again with Tier Limits. It, it was a shifter format. You either played a deck that utilized shifter, or you played two level fours to make Abyss Dweller. Why is shifter protected? Why is shifter not on the list? Well, look at this. We have Malice cards, which are coming out, which can obviously work in Banish. When they get Banish, you can pay life points and summon them back, obviously. So, it's that's a shifter deck. We still have Luanderies, which it's you know can be a cheap, viable option to where they can play shifter. There's also other decks that can just utilize Shifter, like we have Stun decks, we have Millennium. There's quite a few decks out here that will main Shifter. I'm pretty sure we're either going to be on close to the cusp of Snake Eyes Tier 0 and Shifter decks. That's genuinely how it is. I hope and pray that Shifter can get hit in some way, shape, or form. So then it's not turned into a who draws better, you better have it type situation like obviously Yu-Gi-Oh has always been like this who draws the better hand it's like who can out who can who can out resource the opponent quicker and then just kill them when they can kill them but it just seems like it's more apparent and stronger now than it has been not saying there's there hasn't been any other formats that are very powerful Teledad, tier laments hash tier format the literal zone block the little zone block nightmare that we've seen at events. They can adjust this game to be a little a little more diverse and balanced rather than just power creep. And just it's either floodgate or play combo. For the limited, I do agree about the Snake Eye Ash. Uh, my wish list would have been if they didn't announce that Wanted, Bonfire, Diabell Star, and everything else on, under the sun was getting reprinted. I would have preferred Wanted, Seeker of Sinful Spoils to 1. Snake Eyes, Ash to 1. I think that would have been fine. Diabell Star at 3 is totally fine in my opinion. But Wanted should have been at 1. Wanted and Snake Eyes, Ash. I'm pretty sure Master Duel did that for consistency hits. But if you do those consistency hits and you hit Flambers for banning, I think that's going to do a lot more than what we're currently seeing right now. And since we were so... Since we were so quick to hit the Fiendsmith stuff... Lacrima was the only hit you decided to do? I mean, I guess if you hit anything else, like, Sequence into Disarray would stop if you ban Sequence. Disarray stops. Lacrima seemed like the only decent hit. Or, call me crazy, maybe hit Fabled Lurie. That forces us to go into Moon to go into Requiem. Or even go Sanct to summon the token to go into Requiem. If you hit Lurie, that's literally one of the best discard options to special summon itself back to go into Requiem to make this combo line so stupid easy. 
Maybe you could have hit Lurie if you really want to make an impact on Fiendsmith. However, I know they didn't because we do have more Fiendsmith support coming out. So they probably want to see Duelist pivot from Fiendsmith as an engine to Fiendsmith as an actual functioning deck. Which I can agree with. I do love the Fiendsmith archetype. It's one of my favorite ones to look at design-wise, to read, and just figure out different lines. It's incredible. I just don't like it that Snake Eyes is able to gas use this engine as just pure gas and the argument could even be like what about the fire king variant of snake eyes like snake eyes fire king what about that that seems like it's very viable as well or if you really want to be janky with it maybe do fiendsmith snake eyes fire king <laughs> i don't think that's gonna work the way we think it is but people could break it i have faith in the Yu-Gi-Oh community that one thing is for certain it will be broken <laughs> just like this format i just I just wanted more. All in all, to end off with this, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. I'm sorry this video was everywhere. Uh, when I'm editing this later, I'll make sense of it somehow. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the format. What do you think that they should have done? More so, because let's be honest, it's not a great list. It's a good list in the right direction. It seems like they want to get rid of, like, you know, the generic stuff that can just do so much. Anyway, guys, if you guys liked the video, don't forget to, you know, leave a like. If you guys want to subscribe, that'd be cool, too. I'm looking to probably come back with more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. We got to talk about Rota. We got to talk about Crossover Breakers, which the new archetypes are coming out. We got to talk about all that. I might do more Master Duel content. Currently testing you, Bell, in there. When Tenpai Dragon drops, you know I'm going to hit you with the sauce. I missed the regionals, and I was really excited to come back to content creation to show you guys at least the list that I was cooking up, but I couldn't go. I still might show it if you guys want. Just let me know down in the comments, please. I would heavily appreciate that. And we want to do nothing but positivity on the channel, especially in this community, because I love Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't agree with the direction of the format where it's headed, but this is a place of nostalgia for me and probably a lot and probably nostalgic for a lot of other viewers. And to the people that are new, uh, even one of my good friends, she is getting into the game and I'm teaching her. So I want to make it as an enjoyable experience as possible. So please, let's all be nice to each other. Let's all be cordial, even to co-money out there, you know, Just no matter what. We're playing their game. All right, see you later.